It's been a while since I've done a product review and well, a lot of you have been asking to do a review of this James Baroud Space Rooftop Tent. And I've had it now for just about six months. I've done a ton of solo trips in it. My wife and I have used it several times and my son and I did a long trip in it. So I've got a lot of experience with it now. I spent a lot of nights in there. And so there are some things I like and a few criticisms that I have that I'm gonna share with you today in this review. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about my thoughts and opinions about the James Baroud Space Rooftop Tent. And before we get into kind of the details and the nuts and bolts and my opinion about this tent, I wanna talk a little bit about you know, my opinion about who this tent is right for and maybe who it's not right for. This tent costs $4,149. Now, before you keyboard warriors get on there and be like, oh my gosh, that's insane. You're kind of right. It is a lot to spend on a rooftop tent. There are, you know, a few rooftop tents that are more expensive, but not many. Uh, and that is a lot of investment for a place to sleep. Now, I think that somebody that's gonna go out camping, you know, maybe a couple long weekends, three or four long weekends a year and that's it. You know, investing in a $4,000 tent is probably not the right idea. You know, you can get a really nice soft shell rooftop tent that is a third of the price. There's some nice ground tents with some mattresses out there that are great. I don't think this a $4,100 tent is good for those type of people, unless you just got extra money and you just want the convenience of having a rooftop tent like this. Now, if you're somebody like me and you are out for seven, 10, 21 days at a time, and you're constantly going from place to place to place each day, you're setting up, you're breaking down, well, then a tent like this, the investment really pays off in the end because it's very comfortable, you get a good night's rest for those long trips, and setting up and breaking down does not become a big chore. And so that's why I chose this tent. Now, let's get into the specifics, and I'll tell you about the things that I like and a couple of things that I have some criticism for. Now, my specific model of the James Brood tent is the space tent, and it is 140 pounds. It's 78.5 inches long, 55.5 inches wide, and it's 13 and a half inches tall, and this is the standard size. Now, they make an extra large size, but for me, I didn't want that extra large one because it actually would have hung off the side of the trailer, or if it's mounted on the Jeep, it would have just hung out either side a little more than I would have liked. And what I've found is, there's a lot of room inside. In fact, the measurements on the inside are only a half inch smaller than the exterior dimensions. And so uh, when my son and I or my wife and I are sleeping inside, there's plenty of room for the two of us. Now this tent does weigh 140 pounds, which really isn't that much. There are several other hard shell rooftop tents out there that weigh quite a bit more. And this is a polyester glass uh, with a gel coat on the outside and I'll tell you, over six months, the gel coat is holding up well, although there are some pinstripes on there. I can't complain because I have taken this through some pretty good brush and it's holding up nicely. Uh, the cool thing about the James Baroud tents, unlike a lot of others, is you can get these in custom colors. And I think to go back and do it again, maybe I would have gone for red. It would have been pretty slick, but the black is doing just fine. One criticism I have about the actual shell itself is it has these ribs on the top and it's not flat. So if I want to mount a solar panel up there, it, it's a big challenge. You can do it. I've seen a couple people do it because it's not flat air is going to get underneath and so you'd have to get really creative. There are a lot of hard shell rooftop tent manufacturers out there that have flat surfaces where you can just put a solar panel right up there. I would really like it if they would do something like that. Uh, now on the outside you have four latches which make this opening and closing super easy. Uh, the latches do a great job. The only thing is on very, very cold mornings, sometimes pinching these uh, little tabs to pull it down uh, can, can be a little challenging, but I really uh, do like the latches. They're holding up well, uh, and they do a good job of kind of bringing it all together and making sure you have a nice seal on the tent. Uh, on either side of the tent are the mounts for the ladder. There is no mount for the ladder on the rear. I wish that would be something that they would 
would add, uh, but it actually hasn't hindered me. It's been pretty nice, and I will show you the ladder once we get this open. Uh, let's go around to the back. There's just a couple more things I want to talk about. Now, on the back side of the James Brood rooftop tent, you can see I have a Trail Recon decal on there. Well, when I first got this tent, it has on the front the James Brood decal, which I left there. It had James Brood large decals on either side. And then on the back here in big letters, James Brood space tent, jamesbrood.com. Come on. I mean, look, I, I get that manufacturers uh, want to let everybody know what their product is, but there's a little overbranding going on in the Overland community. So manufacturers, tone it down a little bit. I mean, I was joking with somebody the other day. I'm like, what are we, a bunch of NASCAR overlanders? And you start having all these badges and logos and everything all over the place. We're happy to let people know what your product is, but let's be reasonable. So I took those off. Anyway, that's why you see the trail recon decal there. Uh, on the edge, on the top piece here, you have this weather stripping and it has started to come loose. You can see it looks like it was glued before, uh, but it's coming loose a little bit. And so I probably need to get in there and re-glue that. That's a little nitpicky, but for $4,100, I'm gonna be a little nitpicky. Now, something I really like about this rooftop tent that I wish some other manufacturers would consider is on the bottom here, the rails are flush mounted. So when you look at the bottom of this, it's completely flat. The rails are tucked up inside the base of the tent. Typically what you'll see is there's a big thing of T-slot just slapped on the bottom of a rooftop tent and then you mount it. So then it's an extra inch and a half of uh, height that adds to the rooftop tent. Well, you don't get that with this one. Basically from the bottom to the top is what it is. It's 13 and a half inches. You don't have that extra inch and a half or inch or whatever it is of the T-slot. So that's pretty slick. I do like that. Okay, let me open this up and we'll start talking about the inside. Now, the great thing with just about any hard shell rooftop tent is how quick you can set up and break down. You don't have a big cover uh, that you have to deal with. There's just four latches. And what I've experienced in opening this up and closing it down is typically when I open it up, I'll undo the front two latches first and then the rear latches and then closing it up is just the opposite. I will do the rear latches and then the front latches. So let me open this up and we'll take a look around. I don't, I don't know how fast that was, but it's pretty fast. Now I mentioned that this is the space model. And so that's where you get this 22 inch opening at the foot and you get a 51 inch opening at the head. And I really like this configuration. Now they do have one that's hinged right here. So it just opens up on the other side, but you only get 41 inches on the other side. And then there is the other one that just opens straight up and down. I think there's advantages and disadvantages to all three of these. For me, I like this one. There's plenty of room inside. The only thing is it's a little finicky when you go to close it because getting this to come down to close can sometimes be a challenge where if you get the discovery model, which is already hinged here, you just have to close it on the other side. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Now the outside fabric of this tent is very unique. It's their own proprietary fabric. It's an aluminized polyester with an acrylic coating. And this stuff is very durable. It breathes really well. It's solid. I mean, this is a really, nice, I've had five rooftop tents. Uh, this is definitely the best fabric out of all of them. Uh, and then you have mesh all the way around. And then on the edges here, you have a little bit of uh, a bungee that's built into it. And that's to kind of help keep things uh, closed in, keep that fabric closed in when you're closing it. It doesn't do a great job. In fact, I like some of the rooftop tents that have that bungee cord that just goes all the way around and brings it all in. You'll see when I close this, it's a little finicky to kind of close it. It's not as easy to close it as it is to set it up, but it's still not bad. Now, let's get this open here. So there's a zipper that goes all the way to the top. And then on the bottom, it's Velcro. And I think there's pros and cons to that. I personally would like a zipper all the way around because I'm usually the first one up in the morning and in the morning, you know, a zipper isn't terribly loud, but this, that's pretty loud. And so I try to be as quiet as I can in the morning when I get ready to wake up, uh, make my coffee. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. I think a zipper all the way around would be pretty nice. 
Uh, the great thing about this hard shell rooftop tent is that you can store everything inside. Your ladder, a couple sleeping bags, a couple pillows, and they do supply this ladder bag, which not everybody does, because your ladder gets a little dirty, and so having it in a bag like this, super, super nice, because then you're not getting everything dirty inside. I think what some manufacturers are trying to do these days is they're trying to make the rooftop tent hard shells just super low profile. There's some that are only like seven inches tall, which is basically about half the height of this. And that's really cool. It's a low profile. And if you got concerns about getting in your garage or whatever, you just don't want all that height. It's nice to have that. But the disadvantage, and for me, it's a big disadvantage is you can't put your ladder in there. You can't store your sleeping bag, your blankets, your pillows in those low profile ones. I've had a low profile one and finding a place to put your ladder uh, and to have to put all of your sleeping gear away at the end of the day, it's just kind of a, it's kind of a pain. And so to be able to, in the morning, when we get ready to roll out, all I gotta do is put the ladder in the bag, throw it in there, zip it up, close it up, and then we're off. Uh, in the other rooftop tent, you know, you gotta roll up your sleeping bag. You gotta have a place for it in your vehicle. So I'm pretty happy with this one. All right, the ladder just attaches right there. And I like this ladder. It's not your typical telescoping ladder, but it works well. It's very, very sturdy. And these little uh, tabs here where it locks into uh, have stops. So the ladder isn't gonna slide out. It can only go in there a certain way. So that's pretty nice. All right, let's hop inside. All right, welcome to the inside of my rooftop tent. This is a great place to sleep out. Uh, I really am very happy with the, with the inside of this rooftop tent. I'm 6'2", got a ton of room in here. I can almost uh, stand on my knees on the edge here if I need to. I have plenty of leg room, and like I said, when my son and I or my wife and I are sleeping in here side by side, no worries. There are these struts on either side, but they are far enough out of the way that they don't interfere with you when you're sleeping or getting dressed or any other stuff. The best thing about this rooftop tent out of all the rooftop tents I've had, hands down, James Baroud makes the best mattress. This is a three inch mattress and it is very, very comfortable. Most of the other rooftop tents that I've had, I've usually gotten an extra memory foam to put on there just because they were so hard. This one doesn't require it. And underneath, I've got the comfort mat, which is also like a condensation mat, which adds just a little bit more comfort. Could not be happier with uh, this mattress. In fact, it's, uh, it's Regina approved. My wife, uh, she likes this mattress as well. You can see here, we've got windows all around. So there's no window on the back, but there are two large windows on the side. You've got these corner windows, and then you've got the window here in the back. So you've got lots of visibility if you're at a very scenic place, and you've got lots of ventilation. Now, speaking about ventilation, one thing that's unique about the James Brew tent is up here, you have a fan. So on the outside, there is a little tiny solar panel that keeps this fan charged, and you can turn this on or off uh, to kind of help move the air in here. But most importantly, when you are on a very cold camping night, you can turn that on and keep the air circulating and you don't get condensation in here. And so my son and I spent a couple nights in here when we were in some very cold situations. We didn't have any condensation issues with this. However, um, can you hear that? Yeah, so the thing with this uh, fan is to turn it on and off, you have to stick your finger through this hole to reach the button. And it's not a big deal. I mean, it's not gonna cut your finger or anything, uh, but I don't know if it's just, uh, I've done it so many times or whatnot, turning it on and off, that the fan uh, came off the little tab there. So I need to pull this apart and, uh, and fix that right now. It doesn't work. Uh, but the good news is that they do have a five-year warranty on this tent, so I'm sure that if I went in and you know, asked for them to fix that, they probably would do it, but I will probably just uh, sort that out myself. But that is super cool. Having circulating air in your rooftop tent in any tent is very important to keep condensation down. Uh, up here, there is a James Brood light, and so this has uh, a big bright light on the side and then just a smaller light on the edge, which is kind of nice if you're uh, crawling in and out of here uh, in the middle of the night with somebody else, you can just turn the smaller light on. Just one thing about this guy, it is USB uh, to charge it. Just make sure you charge it every once in a while. I did get in here one night and, oops, I forgot to charge that. It had been a while. So uh, there is a nice little mesh basket. This is great for putting blankets and jackets. 
And then on the back side here, there are some pockets for putting phones. Uh, typically what we do is we will put our shoes in there. So we keep some bags because there is no place on the outside of this tent to put your shoes. That is something I've had with every rooftop tent I've had is a shoe bag on the outside. James Brood doesn't have one for this tent uh, that just kind of clips on. So what we've done is uh, we've just gotten some bags and when we get in here, we put our shoes in there and then we tuck them up on that side. Um, there is some nice uh, insulated fabric on top here. You can feel there's a little foam up there when you touch that. And I think, I think that's about it for the inside. I really do like the inside of this tent. And did I mention, this is the best mattress. Now, before I show you how I close this up uh, and give you my final thoughts, uh, let's talk a little bit about how this is done in the weather. Uh, the big thing for me is wind. We're in the desert a lot, and so we find ourselves in some windy situations. And uh, I was out in Death Valley in 40 plus mile an hour winds in here. And the tent holds up fine. There's no question this thing is stable, uh, but the fabric is loud. It just is what it is. When you're in those kind of windy situations, if you've got fabric on the outside, Boy, it's it's gonna make some noise now I've been in some other tents where you know you got all this fabric and rain uh, covers and these little awnings on the side those are super loud this is definitely not as loud in the wind as some of the others uh, but it's still a little noisy uh, I've only had it in the rain a few times but we have not gotten wet and when we are in the cold uh, we stay pretty warm inside especially when you're able to turn that fan on because you can keep that air circulating in there you know if there's two of us in there in 25 degree weather uh, it's actually pretty comfortable. So all in all, this tent has held up pretty well. All right, now let's talk about closing this thing up. So I mentioned that I closed the front uh, first. And so if I have this on my trailer, my Patriot Campers trailer, so it's pretty easy to access this. But if you have it up on the roof of a Jeep or up on a rack on a truck, uh, you know, you're gonna have to reach kind of high to grab these. And basically what these are for is to pull down and then latch those up but that's not how I do it. And they, they are a little finicky because you got to pull it down and then get that just right. But typically what I do, let me show you. I'll hop up here, press this down, and then I will just set these latches into place. I do not actually latch them down just yet because when you grab the handle and you start to pull down, you're going to have to hold it down while you tuck this fabric in because it doesn't do a good job of just bringing the fabric in. You're going to have to walk around kind of while you're holding this and tuck it in. One key thing that really helps is to make sure that you leave a couple of the windows just cracked. That way, when you go to close this, the air that's inside is able to escape. So, all right, let me get this closed. See what I'm talking about right here? You just gotta walk around, tuck all that fabric in. Once you get it all tucked in, then you can just lock down your latches. And there you go. It's much, much easier than a soft shell tent, but I will say that there's some other hard shell rooftop tents that are a little easier to close than this one, but still not bad. So what are my final thoughts on the James Brood rooftop tent? I love it. Out of all the rooftop tents that I've owned over the years, this is definitely my favorite one and it is by far the most comfortable. I think there are some other rooftop tent manufacturers that are making some good quality tents and they're starting to innovate and getting a little bit better with their designs. James Brood, they're manufactured out in Europe and so I know there's some import costs for shipping them over here to the US but I haven't seen a lot of innovation with them. And I would think that with all the competition coming in, you would start to see these kind of evolve a little bit more. Specifically, would really like to have some kind of flat surface up there to put a solar panel, but that's just me. Uh, but all in all, I am really, really happy with this tent. It's a good night's rest. And I think on a long expedition, this kind of fits the bill. It's a little pricey, but for me it works. Now, going forward, I will probably test out some other rooftop tents and retire this one because that's what I enjoy doing for you guys is, you know, using different products and giving you some feedback just like this one. So more to follow on, uh, on you know, I'll be using this one a little bit more, but I don't know. What, what rooftop tent would you like to see me use next? Let me know down in the comments. 
And hey, if you're not an E3 Overland member, we did some great, exciting stuff over the last year with E3 Overland, and we've got some really cool things planned this coming year with bringing people together, a lot of cool community stuff and events. Definitely go check it out if you're not an E3 Overland member. Hit the link below. We'd love to have you. And as always, I hope you've enjoyed this review, guys. Thanks for watching.